Editorial, more military commitments could be on the cards. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson reaffirms his country's friendship with British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson in London in May. New Zealand and Australia are next. Editorial, if all you did was follow US President Donald Trump's Twitter feed. It would be easy to think that his government is a one-man band that has thrown out the rule book and is hastening Armageddon. But the forthcoming visit of Secretary of State Rex Tillerson is a reminder that for some parts of the administration, there is the appearance at least of business as usual. Ignore the noise from the top for a moment. Tillerson's quick trip to Wellington on Tuesday follows former Secretary of State John Kerry's very low-key visit in 2016 and a longer, more high-profile one by his predecessor, Hillary Clinton, in 2010. One came early in the Barack Obama era, the other at its tail end. Tillerson will meet Prime Minister Bill English and Foreign Affairs Minister Jerry Brownlee directly after talks with Australian Foreign Affairs Minister Julie Bishop and Defence Minister Marais Payne in Sydney. Secretary of Defence James Mattis will also go to Sydney but is skipping Wellington. What can we make of this social call? The United States is reminding us of the growing importance of the Asia-Pacific region in its geopolitical calculations. It has its eye on an increasingly powerful China and a dangerously unstable North Korea. East Asia has been a site of relative peace and prosperity for four decades, but there are signs that could change. New Zealand's balancing act will only get more tricky to maintain. We have established enviably close economic and military connections with China. China is looking nervously at its client state, North Korea. The Korean Peninsula is a powder keg. But that is the short-term view. The Tillerson visit, with its requisite pomp and ceremony, is a reminder that New Zealand's historical and even emotional links to the United States go back decades and are arguably deeper and more enduring than any other relationship we have with a major power. Trumps come and go but the links remain. It is also a reminder that despite Trump's isolationist campaign rhetoric, which played so well with his populist base, the US needs and values its allies and partners as much as ever and even wants them to contribute more. This is where we come in and Brownlee is said to be receptive to greater commitments. Tillerson is at the relatively conventional end of the Trump administration. In any other era in US politics, a Secretary of State who came straight from 40 years at an oil company, where he made business deals with Russia, might be seen as a potential liability. But in a White House in which strategist Steve Bannon and the President's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, wield power, a figure like Tillerson seems almost unremarkable. Unlike his boss, Tillerson has also been a fan of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP, which English has been hoping to revive. Along with economic ties, any horse trading will include discussion of our military commitments in Iraq and possibly Afghanistan. 
or as the official, terse language of the State Department puts it, the US and New Zealand will reaffirm our strong ties and discuss coordination on shared strategic interests.